Cheers. Cheers. Thank Congratulations you. on winning your amazing award. Oh, it was very so nice. So tell us about last night. Yeah, it was a good night actually. We were in the you know top ten. We uh, came in number two in the Gourmet Awards, which was fantastic this year. And Mark Best uh, got Best Restaurant, which is fantastic for him. I'm going to hold this up so that everyone can actually have a look <laughs> at what you want. I'm going to hold the plate and. I thought maybe some tarts would be nice on this. Or, well, you know, yes. We could have something really pretty. Yeah, you want the chocolate maybe. cake, perhaps. The chocolate <laughs> cake would be great. I love chocolate. <laughs> I am known for chocolate. Um, so I wanted to find out that moment that you knew you wanted to be a chef. Look, one of my very earliest food memories, and I've actually got a photo of myself at home at about, um, uh, I guess I was just about two years old. Oh, wow. <laughs> licking my mum's pavlova beaters. And apparently, whenever they were, the pavlova beaters were going, which was reasonably often, and my mum's a very good cook, you know, I was, that, that's what I was focused on, getting those beaters. <laughs> so she would say probably that's when I wanted to be a chef. But uh, look, I remember um, when I was sort of, you know, uh, 11, 12, cooking a lot of meals for family and really, you know, basically pushing dad out of the way and getting the barbecue tongs. So, um, do you ever eat junk food? Oh, look, occasionally on the weekend, I'm known to go and get a hamburger. I have to say, I, I love a hamburger. To mm. me, a hamburger, a good one, yeah, absolutely. is like the best thing. But I, I like the Aussie one with the beetroot. Yeah, right, okay. Do you? I'm do not you a, like I, 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 I take the beetroot off. <laughs> I think it makes the butt a bit wet. But, you know, there is beetroot and non-beetroot hamburger people, I think. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm into definitely camps. a beetroot person, <laughs> I have to say. For you, what is the hardest thing? To, to cook. cook. I think a lot of chefs would probably say the simple things are the hardest things to cook because there's nowhere to hide. Okay. You know, the cooking has to be perfect. Generally, it's it's when it's a very straightforward thing, like a perfectly good old piece of fish. There's nowhere to hide. It has to be perfect. It has to be cooked perfectly. If you were to choose between olive oil, salt, butter, which one would that be? We don't use a lot of olive oil in our okay. cooking. We use a bit. Um, but um, we tend to use uh, quite a lot of butter as well, but we use clarified butter. Um, for cooking uh, with a uh, combination of uh, grapeseed oil because it's okay. a more neutral taste, so I'm not getting that strong taste. Why do so many people not season? What is this yeah. belief that salt is bad for you in food? I don't know. It's very you know, important. Yeah, it's very important to food. And, you know, it, and I think it's sort of important to look at the amount of salt you're adding and get it right. We never put salt on the table here at Key because, you know, some people just have the habit of putting salt straight on their food. The chefs always season when they cook, so that's why we don't put salt on the table because we don't people want people to over season. Do you have a particular olive oil that you like to use for your dressings? Um, or is there a brand yeah, that you like? Yeah, yeah. Well, look, really, I think one of the best Australian olive oils that we have is Joseph. Oh, uh, nice. First run. It's a really beautiful oil. And, uh, and I use it at home for dressing salads and stuff as well, so it is a lovely oil. Really interesting that you use an Australian one. I'm happy that you do because so many people use the ones from overseas. Yeah, the Italian ones. Uh, look, I mean, I, I do use an occasional Italian one too, but I really, I think when Australia makes a good product, um, we should use it. I mean, you have your own garden. Yeah, I do. Don't you? Absolutely. Do you like to garden? I love, garden? I, love to, I love to garden. <laughs> it's my downtime. Um, I actually use the garden to sort of unwind, relax and uh, get my hands in the dirt and it sort of centres you. I actually get a lot of uh, seeds from overseas over the internet. Um, I search low and high to find unusual varieties, uh, heirloom varieties of vegetables and I'll grow them at home first and I'll find something that I really like and then we'll get our gardeners in the Blue Mountains, uh, Richard and Nina, to grow it on a big scale for the restaurant. I want to know which knife because everybody yep. wants to know the knife. So the knife, yeah. if there's only one knife that you can yeah. use for the rest of your life, life right, what, would what it be? knife would it be? And well, do you have one to show <laughs> us? Uh, yeah, I probably do actually. Okay. My favourite knife would be my Michelle Bra knives, which um, I bought over in France. And they're made by a Japanese company, Kai. Okay. Um, and really, they're so beautiful. They're beautifully handcrafted. I'll, I'll go and get one for you. I'd love to see okay, one. Cool. Um, this is my favourite knife. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. So uh, the company who makes it is Kai from Japan. And uh, this is uh, Michelle Bra uh, knife. That's his little symbol, Michelle Bra symbol. But it is beautifully crafted. Um, this one's actually coated with titanium. Um, and uh, we, I use this for a lot of, uh, a lot of work. Uh, it's really good for slicing and sashimi. Uh, beautiful wooden handle, beautiful ergonomic sort of shaped handle. Um, but you can buy a very similar knife without the Michelle Bra logo, but it's a Japanese Kai knife. I do believe the Japanese make the best knives. If, if I were to say to you one protein for the rest of your life... Mm-hmm. One protein. One protein. Fish, bird, meat or, um, or pork, what would it be? Oh God. I think pork is pretty uh, versatile. Okay. Uh, and it's so luxurious. 
But then again, I don't know. I mean, I really like um, I really like uh, fish as well. I think fish is beautiful. Um, but I don't know if you had to eat one thing for the rest of your life. I don't know. I love that because you actually can't answer. Your I can't shit. answer it. It's really hard. <laughs> How do you answer that? I don't know. Shit? Look, look maybe, maybe it would be uh, a really good steak too. I don't I know. Mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can have that a couple of different ways. But yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Most famous person you've ever cooked for? Oh wow. Um, it's been been a few interesting people over the years. Oh, look, I think personally for me, uh, cooking for you too and Bono mm. was, was pretty fantastic when I oh, came to the restaurant a few cool. years ago. Yeah, okay. it was very cool. You know, boyhood uh, heroes, and um, you know, I, I remember going to a U2 concert back in 1984 at the Entertainment Centre, and it was only last year that I cooked for them. I'm glad I got that question. Yeah, it was a good question. <laughs> If you were at home and you were going to make a seasonal summer summer recipe, okay. what would your what would your choice be? Just mm. the kids are at home yeah. and maybe you've got some friends coming around and you're going to throw something together. Absolutely. Uh, look, I think um, a barbecue is always a great thing. Mm. Uh, one thing I love to do around Christmas time is um, when white peach is around, I make white peach bellinis, and you know it's a bit of a cliche, but prawns on the barbecue is pretty hot. Yeah. And then you know serve them with a really good um, aioli or something like that. Yeah, or a really nice slow braise, I think. In okay. You know you can. You can put a really good braise on, leave it on for four or five hours on really low. And you don't have to do too much work once the initial stuff's done. And then you just serve it, put it in the middle of the table with a big bowl of flint or rice or something. It's great. And they just think you're a hero. Oh, absolutely. Oh, and it's good. a great way to entertain. What is the worst meal you've ever cooked? Oh, God. That's a hard one. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's blank from my memory <laughs> if, it, if it was a really worst meal. When I was sort of about, uh, how old was I? About 19 and I was cooking uh, dinner for my um, wife's um, parents at the time. Who was She was my girlfriend back then. And it was, I think it was the first dinner I cooked for them and I wanted this to be really special and I went up to this, just the local butcher shop and bought a big roll of uh, pork loin and I spent ages trussing it and turning it and roasted it. And I don't know what happened but I think I left it in the oven a bit too long and it came out really dry <laughs> and everyone was just so, so polite and oh this is lovely, you know, and I'm going, this is terrible. <laughs> so, well, there so there you go, you go. I've got one memory locked you in there have. somewhere. You've got a good way. <laughs> if I were to ask you who inspires you as a chef, an Australian chef, who would yep. you say, who would you choose? Oh, uh, look I think it'd have to be Neil Perry, to okay. be honest. And the main reason for that is that, you know, Neil has been out for so long and he's such an innovator, but he's also had a lot of ups and a lot of downs, but he always comes back and he's always positive and uh, he never lets anything, uh, you know, beat him. And he's just such an uh, optimist and a passionate chef. I, I think, yeah, he's very inspiring. And he was really, I think, the first Australian-born, iconic Australian chef uh, to make it internationally as well. We've had so many international chefs coming into Sydney and yeah. I mean I know that you must know so many of them. Yeah. Who inspires you internationally? Oh look, uh, there'd be, there are so many and there's so many great chefs out there and it's really hard, you know, like I, I think, you know, you could say, you know, Thomas Keller and Heston Blumenthal are way up there on my list and, and uh, Rene from Norma. But I think if I had to narrow it down, um, I think Michel Bra because okay. he was such an original uh, and the first really to really truly discover the garden and, um, and really promote the use of vegetables in a big way. Um, he's a real pioneer. Um, and I think as a current chef, I think Andoni from Mergeritz is really pushing some boundaries. His food is just so focused and so singular. And it, it's a huge risk that he takes with some of the stuff he serves. But it, as a chef, I can really appreciate his singular vision. I think that pushing the boundaries is something that you tend to do as well. Mm. You like to be able to actually push those. And for me, your food is amazingly balanced between food that's quite progressive, yeah. but at the same time still very produce-based. Yeah. And I think that is a really interesting way. You don't you don't dissect it to the point where it doesn't yeah, you look like anything exactly. you've ever seen before, but at the same yeah. time, you're still playing and testing those flavors. And just the food we saw in the kitchen now, yeah. you know, the beetroot bread that's sort of sitting there, and it, it's very interesting. So, if I were to say the most romantic restaurant other than your own in oh. Sydney, and not the, well, not the, not where on. we're sitting now, <laughs> I'm slightly in love with you right now, so it's okay, but if we were going to go somewhere else, right, where would, where would you, you go? go? Oh, geez, I don't know. Um, look, I think um, there are some beautiful restaurants. Uh, I actually really like Mark Restaurant because it's so small and intimate, um, and it's just really tastefully uh, decorated. A lot of couples do go there, it's a small restaurant and the focus is on great food and great wine and that's pretty important I think. If I was to ask you the one thing that you think you would like everyone to know about you, 
What would it be? Wow, that's really interesting. Um, look, I think from a professional point of view, uh, the one thing I'd like people to know that I'm passionate about is diversity of mm -hmm. produce. Um, I mean, there's so much amazing stuff out there and we get to see such a little amount of the varieties of things that are available. You know, when you go to the supermarket and there's, you know, maybe five different apples to choose from, but you know there is literally hundreds and hundreds of varieties out there uh, that are really interesting, but, you know, for whatever reason the shelf life's not good or whatever, then they're, not, uh, they're not used. And I'm really passionate about promoting unusual varieties and diversity of nature, rare breeds of animals, uh, heirloom vegetables, all of that sort of stuff. And the, the most sexy produce that there is, I mean, if you're on a hot date and you <laughs> want to give in the sexiest thing, produce. what is the sexiest oh, thing? I think it has to be uh, sushi, really. Sushi, yeah. okay. Yeah, it's just the textural thing, uh, closely followed by chocolate. Yeah, I'm with you on yeah. that. Well, chocolate is supposed to uh, imitate the feeling of being in love. So, you know, you're probably halfway there if you give the girl chocolate. No wonder I don't feel like I need today, but you are probably <laughs> um, And I have to say that your little pearls, mm. um, your beautiful sea pearls. sea pearls, I mean, they're kind of, they're kind of sexy. Great. Aren't they? I yeah. mean, they're all they're, they're texturally beautiful. They're yeah. exquisite to look at. They have all that beautiful raw fish that's kind yeah. of just yummy Central and, and it's yeah. really good. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that that's, you, you're yeah. getting it right there. <laughs> <laughs> good. <laughs> your best food moment to date, the best oh. moments in your life food-wise. Actually, that's pretty easy. Um, about a year and a half ago, um, my wife and I traveled through uh, France and I'd got to know um, Sebastian Bra quite well because he came out for the food festival and he cooked with us here at Key. And uh, we went to Michel Bra uh, restaurant for dinner and we had an amazing dinner. That was fantastic. And we stayed overnight. And uh, the next morning, Sebastian came up and said, um, my dad would like to cook for you at his house. Oh, wow. So we went over to his house for lunch and it was the most amazing thing. Really? Yeah. He has a beautiful kitchen, a uh, really traditional sort of, uh, what was really interesting was it was a beautiful sort of log, um, log fire that you cook over and on the other side of the kitchen was all these modern appliances, induction tops and, and everything. And, uh, you know, and, and we just sat there and had the most simple, beautiful lunch. Uh, you know, we had local um, pâtés and uh, salamis from the area. And we had the most amazing, he cooked this amazing asparagus sweet bread and morel uh, dish. Oh, nice. Uh, and then we had some beautiful cheese, some great wine, and it is finished with a big bowl of strawberries and cream. And I'm sitting under the table pinching myself, and Michelle Bra is cooking my lunch. And uh, we're having a little intimate table in his house, so it was the best experience ever. So it kind of mirrors the fact that I'm actually having a really good experience now while I interview you. <laughs> 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 because, yeah, I've just found something. Yeah. And I mean, let's be honest, interviewing you in this amazing place is spectacular for anybody in my position. Oh. To be able to do that. Thank well, you so nice. much. I really we'll have, to give, we'll, have to, we'll have to give you some food as well. <laughs> yes, that would be good, but thanks for the wine. Excellent. <laughs> okay.